मुंबई विद द टाइम्स चलो को प्यार पड़ो को प्रणाम नमस्कार सत श्री अकाल आदाब वन ऑल रियली मीन इज लव एंड ब्लेसिंग्स टू ऑल माय यंग वंस एंड रिस्पेक्ट टू माय एल्डर्स टुडे इन द डिफिकल्ट टाइम्स ऑफ कोविड-19 एंड ऑन टॉप द ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन हेरल इन फिजी वी वुड बी टॉकिंग टू मिस्टर संदीप चौहान द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर फॉर द स्टार प्रिंटरी इन फिजी द लार्जेस्ट प्रिंटर एंड ग्राफिक्स कंपनी इन द कंट्री Mr Chauhan is also the president of Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation. He represents the largest private sector group in Fiji. Today we will talk to uh, Mr Sandeep Chauhan to present the private sector views on COVID-19 and the impact of tropical cyclone Harold. Sandeep ji, welcome to the show. Thank you Nabeel ji. Look, the Fiji I started the partial lockdown in Latoka then it extended to all over the Fiji how this has impacted the whole community the workers the business and rest of the people overall well, look the impact has been felt worldwide Fiji is no different our my personal opinion is that you know because it's a smaller community smaller country it's much easier to contain it and it's a lot easier to monitor it so the first case was found in lotoka or mm-hmm. also lotoka so obviously it was a lot easier to contact trace as well as put everybody that was a part of that particular family or who he had come or she had come in contact with to isolate them having done that they contact traced and put any suspected cases under isolation as well mm-hmm. so it became a lot easier latoka came out of isolation i think it was last week uh, thursday or wednesday and they haven't had any new cases as such oh that's so, a good news yeah so th- right throughout they've had um, they've had monitoring in place and they've ensured that if there had been contact then they would have had you know contact tracing done and ensured that those people would have been put into is- isolation similarly with the person that came in or the uh, case that was identified from that came in from overseas um, i think india via singapore so that person has also been put into isolation as a whole community in lambasa that's been put into isolation and suva is under lockdown so there has been impact because people living outside of the confined areas cannot come in so if we were to look at our business people that are living outside of the greater suva area cannot come to work and different businesses are dealing with it differently their options being so some are on reduced hours we mm-hmm. have opted to talk to our people and to our workers and we've said look use up your annual leave um during this time so um and then you've got your sick leaves your um family care leave etc so different companies are utilizing all of that in conjunction and consultation with the employees to use up these leaves so that they're not impacted and they don't have to touch their uh, provident fund savings as well i think it's a difficult time and it shall uh, pass too as well i hope it uh, passed on sooner than later so for the daily use like grocery and all that how easy is that to obtain for the local public um there haven't been any difficulties because the despite the lockdown you're still able to go to a grocery store they started practicing um social distancing they're allowing limited number of people into the store if i if i were to give you an example i think a few days back when i went into or passing by one of the other supermarkets there were people lined up outside and they were allowing so i think there were there would have been about 20 people lined up outside there might have been another 20 or 30 people inside depending on how big the store is so so supermarkets are managing it themselves as well so a lot of businesses are self managing it um as well as manufacturing uh, essential services uh, manufacturing plants as well they're also managing it themselves everybody knows the difficulty and the and the issue there is so they're doing the best with the uh, within the circumstances i i fully agree you know if everyone take the responsibility this issue can be resolved in a much easier way like many people in fiji live in the rural areas and they are substantially dependent on coming to the bigger towns to sell their goods and buy things in returns how are the restrictions affecting them the government has made provisions for them so what they do is they bring it to a border or where the suva border is um whichever areas you live in so every every portion 
uh, of the country or city has a border and you bring your goods to the border and the Ministry of Agriculture makes arrangements to shift the goods across from one from the post to another um, and it's buying it and settling at the same time. So there have been provisions made for produce to come in and being sold at different satellite uh, markets that have been set up. How prepared is Fiji for the coronavirus and how do you think the government has been responding to the cases that has been around? Um, I think fairly well organized in the sense that as soon as we knew something of this sort or magnitude had happened and having studied the reports from other countries overseas, the Fijian government got into action pretty quickly, you know, um, and they started shutting down the borders, they started isolating cases, they started putting in measures in place to contain it. And I think because of that, at this point in time, we've got what, 14 or 15 odd cases, um, and mainly confined to two or three people of interest, sort of thing, you know, so they've all been um, the the other 12 or f uh, 13 cases have all been related to each other sort of thing. So it's, it's more like of a contact spread as opposed to a new case coming in. All right. All right. Look, apart from the lockdown, uh, the Fiji has been impacted by the cyclone. What have been the impact on the country overall with the combination of COVID as well as the cyclone? Pretty, pretty damaging, I must I say, know. because yeah. it's, it's, it's unfortunate. But as you know, uh, it, it's a very resilient country. It's gone through a lot. Um, PC Winston three years ago, four years ago in 2016, and it bounced right back up. So something like this, I mean, I'd like to think that it's a phase. We've had impacts, but, you know, we've also had help from outside as well. You know, the Australian government, New Zealand government, and many other governments have come on board and started assisting us um, in rehabilitation work. So that helps. Um, COVID is an, is an unfortunate situation, but so is the PC Harold. Um, it's done a lot of damages to the outer islands, as well as some of the home structures or businesses lying on the outskirts of the Suva areas. So a lot of people are, are trying to rebuild you know, amidst losing their jobs or hours being reduced. So, but, but in saying that, a lot of people are also coming on board to assist where they can. I think uh, having the double uh, impact on the country, the government is trying to respond as much as can. On top, the people are responding very, very responsibly as well to fight it back. I think time to stay strong. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, over the weekend, I think the government also put together and made available produce to be sent over to the outer islands. So a vessel sailed yesterday. So families, relatives for, for people that were living on the maritime zones or in the islands, their family would come to a certain drop off point and send goods to their families. And there are others who would just come in and give goods. And the government also made provisions for goods to be shipped over to the separate maritime zones. And, you know, um, with the COVID situation, and I'm quite impressed with the way they handled it, was that they could not send medical personnel from Suva because it's under lockdown. So mm -hmm. they made arrangements from people outside of Suva to come in and ensure that they were all screened and tested before sending them out into the maritime zone so that the disease is not spread to the outer islands. So there's a lot of logistics, a lot of thought going into all of this for them to ensure that, you know, the, the proper measures and the procedures are followed. Well, that's great. That's great. So there has been assistance from the other countries like Australia and New Zealand. I hope uh, that's more than enough they have. to start I, I think with. They have, they, they have pledged. Uh, the Fiji people are quite resilient, having faced a number of calamities uh, so far. How do you look at it and what the recovery will be like? That's a difficult one. Um, you know, resilience, I think, is, is, is good and we have been very resilient. But COVID is different. You know, I mean, COVID has affected, I think, different countries in different ways. I mean, when you look at tourism being one of our biggest earners that's right now that's that's complete standstill so there's there's nothing coming in or there's no tourists coming in um in a way i suppose it's going to make us look at different sectors and say well we've got to start diversifying a lot more rather than relying on one on one uh trade or income generator 
And it will be the same for many other countries. Fiji is not going to be the only one. Um, people will also have to start looking at alternative markets for raw materials, which, which is another aspect that, you know, that Fiji would also look at or suppliers and manufacturers would look at in Fiji. So th there are multiple avenues that I think businesses will start looking at and say, okay, we've got to start changing our models or business models to cope with such events. God forbid we don't have this again, but if we do, then we've got to be better prepared. Look, Fiji is a sporting loving uh, nation. How has the sports been impacted? I think no one has been able to go out and do the practice and all that. So that has been probably impacted to the greater. Uh... Absolutely. It's no different to any other country in the world. Um, everything that involves touching or uh, a number of people, it's all stopped. You know, um, yes, you can go for a run, but as long as you're on your own. Um, you could probably go with somebody that lives in the same house as you, uh, but that would be it. So you're still limiting the number of people that you can go out with. So there's no contact sports. There's, you can't throw a rugby ball or a soccer ball around and, you know, start kicking it around and gather people. You can't do that. Look, uh, on behalf of Fiji Times Australia, I wish the whole world gets cured as soon as possible. What really needs to be done is uh, to stay safe, is to stay home. Sandeepji, I understand you have a very busy schedule. Thank you so much once again on behalf of Fiji Time Australia. Jiha, so aaj humne ki Sandeep Chauhan se baatcheet aur main aapka dafneet. Sandeepji, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. One stop answer to your Australian education and visa matters. Jemco Sydney, dream big, achieve big.